Thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, earlier today, the Senate State Affairs Committee voted to hold in committee Senator Groh's bill on the initiatives. In his closing arguments, Senator Groh said that he had been in talks with your office. Did he talk directly to you about this bill? You know, I have talked to Senator Groh uh, a number of times, n not necessarily directly about this bill, but uh, certainly I, I understand some of his concerns and some of his wishes, you know, to to spread that out across a broader uh, range of, of folks. Um, I don't know, I, I think our current initiative process is pretty darn tough as it is, but, uh, but I can understand wanting to spread that out a little more. So is there a middle ground that you see possible that would include more districts but not set the bar as high as those testifying said? would be too too far a bridge for them. Well certainly there's there's always middle ground and, and uh, uh, you know maybe rather than raising the percentage just increasing the number of districts and I don't know that the number he's got is is the correct number but you know uh, certainly that's that's a policy decision and, and we're willing to to work with whatever we get. When you say that the bar is already pretty high, but you can see the need to maybe include rural voters, don't rural voters already get a say when they get to vote in the general election if the initiative ends up on the ballot? You know, they, they do. You know, everyone gets a vote, but, but uh, you know, some would say that, that uh, the rural voters are out, outvoted, you know, simply because of the population. You know, this last two initiatives that that made the ballot, um, uh, they had to get those 6% in, or 6% in uh, at least 18 districts. Well, there were nine districts in Ada County that all qualified in both initiatives. So, you know, I, I think that bolsters his argument that it's not spread out, but, but still, uh, that's a pretty high bar. And it cost a lot of money to get both initiatives on the 2018 ballots. Wouldn't that also increase the cost? I'm sure that it would. You know, most most uh, of those initiatives now, <clears throat> that, that signature gathering is uh, paid for by by paid signature gatherers. And I think both of these initiatives uh, for the signature gathering portion cost the, the proponents over a million dollars on each one. Do you worry that this will set the state up for a lawsuit? Certainly, it. I think it could. I. I think it. Like I said, I think it's already a pretty high bar, and and I think that you can get the bar too high, which would precipitate a, a lawsuit. So to be clear, is this bar in Senator Groh's bill too high, in your opinion? Well, I'm. <laughs> I don't think that I can comment on that. You know that that would be up to those who who want the bar lowered or where it is currently and and certainly if they choose to challenge it in court uh, that's where the courts get their say. You say you don't think you could comment but if you were to comment what would you say? <laughs> you know like like I said I think uh, I think maybe some tweaks to the current one to try and and spread out the number of districts to get more in the rural areas but maybe not increase the percentages because it's already pretty difficult. I wanted to switch gears and ask you about some legislation from your office on campaign finance and lobbyist registration. What do those bills do and where are they at? Uh, well, neither, neither one of the bills have passed. The least controversial one is in the House now and, uh, and certainly we are hopeful that it gets passed because it will it brings some things in that we think are very necessary and that is is bringing the locals into the campaign finance uh, arena and and setting up our own website to to house all that information so that uh, right now if you want to get f campaign finance information statewide you may have to go to as many I think as 79 different locations to to get that information and and hopefully uh, we can get that all on our website uh, and have the the actual filing and and stuff done through us and then distributed back out to the to the counties who are administering the locals and this is something that would increase transparency good for the public something your office advocates for but it's hit sticking points in the house it it has you know and 
and there there is a fine line there between transparency and confidentiality you know and uh, certainly I understand the arguments uh, however I think I would rather err on the side of transparency you know and, and having the people decide I know the arguments on some is that that uh, if it's transparent and everybody knows who is contributing there may be retribution uh, I won't come to your business if you support this or or you know your your kids may be mistreated in school because you didn't support a bond issue you know I understand that but I think uh, for me I think the transparency is more important you were in the house for many years has your view on this changed since you became Secretary of State you know um, I th I think there's a lot of work that needs to be done on on our sunshine laws, and I think there always has been. Um, you know, it they're they're pretty vague. Uh, the enforcement part is, uh, which neither one of these bills deal with, uh, is is pretty lax. I mean, we really don't have the authority to do any investigation, other than if we think there's probable cause, we turn it over to the attorney general. And the attorney general's a little reluctant sometime to to look at those because if they if they win they get uh, the fine is two hundred and fifty dollars and and their time is is worth a lot more than that. I've asked you this before, but I'll ask again. Do you feel like your office should have more enforcement and investigatory authority? You know, I. Uh, that's again that's a policy decision I think that it needs to be somewhere and uh, you know I know that uh, there have been proposals for an ethics commission or or something of the of that nature uh, certainly I don't think that we do justice to investigating violations so I think that somewhere there needs to be more authority to do that but should that authority be in your office? Would you support that if somebody proposed it? I would support it if they proposed it. I don't think I would propose it myself. It's, it's, uh, it's one of those things that you're, that you're caught in the middle on and, um, and then I would rather somebody else was doing it, but, but certainly I think it is our responsibility to make sure that, that elections are transparent and, and the campaign finance is transparent. And there is, of course, a big election coming up next year, um, the 2020 presidential primary. Right. Um, your budget didn't include, what was it, $2 million <laughs> for the Republican presidential primary. What happened? Well, you said the Republican. It, I think the Democrats are going to participate this year in the presidential primary as well. Uh, basically, what happened when that presidential primary was created four years ago there was a trailer bill that financed that, the $2 million, and it never did get put in our template. And, and certainly our budget was out there. We, we submitted it on the 1st of September, and it, uh, and it fell through everybody's radar until about the 1st of February. You say everybody. It wasn't just your office. It was the budget office and the governor's office and the media. Nobody noticed this. Right. Well, you know, it was probably our responsibility to to do that but uh, when it was brought to our attention and it doesn't have to be funded this year you know um, because that won't we won't get those bills in until probably April of next year so it could have been funded to, during the uh, as a supplemental next year so I think uh, but it will be included in the budget I'm sure in four years <laughs> as long as they still go ahead and, and have a presidential primary. All right, Secretary of State Lawrence Denny, happy Sunshine Week, and thank you so much for your time. All right, well, thank you.